George and Barbara Bush celebrated their 73rd wedding anniversary in January. Mrs. Bush said keeping a sense of humor was the secret to their enduring marriage. Jim Axelrod is here with their love story, which lasted more than three quarters of a century. Jim, good morning. Good morning. George Herbert Walker Bush and Barbara Pierce met in 1941 at a school dance. He was 17. She was just 16. He told a friend she was the most beautiful girl on the dance floor. Barbara Bush was just 19 when she married her Navy pilot, home on leave from World War II. I married the first man I ever kissed, Barbara Bush used to say. When I tell this to my children, they just about throw up. And while they did their best to keep pace with modern life over the next 73 years, this couple remained an old-fashioned love story. I fell in love with him practically at first sight. Probably went home and told my mother about him. She was should have been the head of the CIA. She knew everything about him the next morning. But, but he's just a. I, he's a very giving. He's never once said no to me. The two exchanged love letters throughout their relationship, including one George sent in 1943, while serving in World War II. They shared it on the Oprah Winfrey Show. I love you, precious with all my heart, and to know you love me means my life. How often have I thought about the immeasurable joy that will be ours someday, how lucky our children will be to have a mother like you. This is a pretty good preview of coming attractions, I'll tell you. Very nice. Thank you, Bert. Thank you. I still feel the same way. They were married longer than any couple in presidential history. One of the reasons I made the most important decision of my life to marry George Bush is because he made me laugh. At times, Barbara Bush pulled 40 points higher than her husband, and she used her capital to support him. You make me feel wonderful, but then I always feel wonderful when I get to talk about the strongest, the most decent, the most caring, the wisest, yes, and the healthiest man I know. Their six kids produce the widest range of parental emotions imaginable. Watching one son become president. Thank you very much. Another, the governor of Florida, and burying a daughter, Robin, who died of leukemia at the age of three. Through it all, Poppy and Barr, as they called each other, celebrated and endured Together. The way I describe it is they could be at a dinner table and they can look at each other and they're talking to one another without saying a word. That's what happens That's when, nice. you're, when you're in love. Barbara Bush guarded her husband's back, kept his feet firmly planted on the ground, and even to the very end of their long, loving marriage, made sure to hold his hand. George Bush, George Bush wrote that love letter to his then fiance on the same day that their engagement announcement was published in the newspaper. And in it, the former president also writes, Barr, you've made my life full of everything I could ever dream of. My complete happiness should be a token of my love for you. That's a thought that'll melt anybody on this morning as we consider the life of Barbara yeah. Bush. Yeah. You know, when we talk about public service, this is what that, having covered politicians, this is what that means. George Bush had a life in public service, and if you've ever watched anybody you love get attacked in public, mm -hmm. that hurts the person who loves them the most. She had to do that through his whole career, then do it for two kids in public life. Mm -hmm. And she had to keep the emotional accounts for that entire family, and she was restrained pretty much in public mm -hmm. while going through all of that em emotional. So she was serving her country by serving her family and doing it just like regular old families do, moving almost 30 times, mm -hmm. keeping yeah. the house you know, as well as, as being there for that family. That's what a dedication to public service means when you dedicate yourself to your family. She was criticized when going to Wellesley that she hadn't had a career of her own, but in fact, she was a career public servant in mm -hmm. so many ways. That's yeah. right. She did all of this at a time that roles are changing for women, and she said, that, as you said, that, that the women's movement, in a way, made her feel inadequate because that life of service she dedicated to was being called and into question. And she was fierce, and she was fierce, but had she been the father and a man, she would have just been called yeah. strong and protected. She said, you can attack me as much as you want, just don't attack my husband or kids. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. The silver fox. Yes. The silver fox.